Whenever I talk to parents, and I talk a lot to parents, but whenever I'm asking them what kind of future they would like for their, uh, their children, they always say pretty much the same thing. That they want three things for their children. They want their kids to be happy, they want their kids to be healthy, they want their kids to be prosperous. That's the kind of career that they have in mind. It doesn't matter what the job itself is. But then they hear about employers complaining all the time about the inadequacy of employability training that's provided in schools, colleges and, and even universities. They, they hear horror stories about kids who've worked really, really hard, gained really excellent qualifications, but who end up in some menial, low-paid job that they were qualified to do if they'd left school after, the, after their GCSEs. Now that is a heartbreaking outcome for any young person. And in fact, it's a pretty heartbreaking outcome for the parents as well. But you see, nothing jeopardises the provision of high quality employability training more uh, than, the, uh, the, than, than the imposition of, of, of government strategies, things dictated by the Minister of State for Education, whoever that happens to be. Now, when the Labour Party was in, in power, of course, they, had, uh, they set an objective uh, to get 50% of students going to university and getting degrees. That, that was their goal to achieve that. But in order to achieve that goal, there were a number of other things they had to get in place. First thing they had to do was convince parents and young people that they were never going to succeed in the job market without a degree. I mean, never mind what their job career was, you know, might be an atomic physicist, in which case a degree is probably essential, but it could be a beautician, it could be a landscape gardener, or oh, you can't do that without a degree. The second thing they had to get in place, they had to make sure that exams were not so demanding that student grades would get them rejected when they applied for university. So it meant that then really students with quite mediocre talents were getting A's in everything. <laughs> and the third thing they had to get in place uh, was to, to uh, convert every organisation that had been a polytechnic into a university to cope with the, uh, with the extra demand for university places. And they succeeded in their plans. But what was the inevitable consequence of that policy? Let me tell you. The consequence of that policy was that in the eyes of employers, degrees were completely devalued. I mean, when I graduated, you were a celebrity if you could put BA or BSc after your name. But you go to an employer now and say, hey, look, I've got a degree. The response is likely to be, show me someone who hasn't. And then along came the Conservatives. And as always happens when there's a change, a complete change of, of party in command, they decided to change the emphasis completely. And now uh, they're really pushing apprenticeships. On the face of it, a good policy. <laughs> yeah, on the face of it. But here's the problem that schools face. See, school six forms are funded according to how many students stay on to the sixth form after GCSEs. At the time of speaking, that figure is £4,400 per student per year. Now, Let's imagine for a moment that you've got a hundred students in the GCSE year group. But before they sit their exams, the career teacher advises 10 of those students, just 10 out of a hundred, that it would be in their best interests not to stay on to sixth form. It would be in their best interest to leave school after GCSEs and pursue an apprenticeship. That career teacher just knocked £44,000 off the school's bottom line. 
It is almost certainly more than his annual salary. So what kind of appraisal do you think that teacher can expect with his head at the end of the year? Not looking good, is it? You see, what we have at the moment is a government which on the face of it is pushing apprenticeships, requiring schools to uh, introduce apprenticeships for their students, but then they impose enormous financial penalties on every school that actually does it. Now, if that makes sense to you, Mum or Dad, it makes more sense than it does to me. And the other thing we've got to take into account is we also have a government that want young people to be prepared for the job market, but they do not provide one penny of funding for employability training, which is ring-fenced for the purpose. See, let me tell you this. If you have a son who works really hard and goes to a really good school, I can pretty much guarantee that that boy will excel academically. But it will not help him to stand out from the crowd. Because, you see, there are tens of thousands of other young people all over the country who are also working very hard and who also go to very good schools. Your daughter may really apply herself at university. If she does, there is every chance that she will leave university with a 2-1 degree or better. But that doesn't help her to stand out from the crowd either. And I've already explained why. So, if qualifications are not what helps your son or daughter stand out from the crowd, what does? Well, I'll tell you what does. It's something called strategies. And you see, the, the problem with, with this crazy political carnage that's going on is that far too many young people leave, uh, leave the education system not knowing half the stuff that they really ought to know about the job market when they go out there. You cannot expect a kid to know what he doesn't even know he needs to know. And if his parents don't know either, that is a disaster waiting to happen, isn't it? You see, I have identified eight strategies that I think all young people need to understand if they are going to make a thriving start to their career. And I put those strategies together in three ways. If I had not taken the trouble to speak to as many company executives as I did, if I had not taken the trouble to mock interview nearly 3,000 students in schools from Birmingham to Bristol, Hereford to Swindon and everywhere in between, and if I had not piloted my workshops in schools, I would have come up with a completely inappropriate programme. You would, if I hadn't done that, you would be listening now to someone who is nothing more than a plausible moron. Well-meaning, but who doesn't know what he's talking about. Think of the damage I could have done. But these are strategies that young people need to know. Now, some of you may be sitting there and thinking, well, could, couldn't I put this off? Why don't I wait until they are qualified and then see how they get on? And then I'll come to you for advice, if they get stuck. Yeah, you could do that. But let's think for a moment about how Olympic athletes prepare for the Olympic Games. Do they turn up at the opening ceremony and think, I'm running in the 100 metres next Thursday, I'd better do a bit of sprint practice? Of course they don't. They're not going to do that. Not if they want to be in the medals, they don't. They, tra they start training for the next Olympics after the last one's just finished. We're talking four years. And that is the approach I take to employability training. It's a drip feed program. It's drip feed because it's what a young person can cope with over the long term when they've got so much else going on in their lives, like studying for the next exam. These things are important. 
Now, just for now, there's only one thing that you can do. The only thing you can do right now is to give me your contact details so we can book a conversation together. It won't commit you to anything. In fact, you can't commit yourself to anything, even if you want to. Until we've had that conversation, I must warn you, I cannot even guarantee that your application will be successful. Because, you see, I want everybody whose kid is involved with me to feel at the end of it that they really got their money's worth out of the programme. And it is a long-term commitment, but to each to each other. And I'm not aiming to create a program which is the cheapest available option either. Because the last thing I want any parent saying of me is, Barry's program might be the least expensive you can get your, your hands on, but if you use his program you'll soon find out why it's so inexpensive. I don't want anybody saying that of me. No. That's all you can commit yourself to right now is a conversation with me and then we'll take it from there. We'll talk about the aspirations of your son or your daughter, we'll talk about your concerns, we'll talk about what stage of, of education they're at and we'll talk about your budget as well. And here's a bonus. For the first 30 people who supply me with their contact details and say, Barry, I'd love to hold that conversation, here's the bonus you will get a free copy of my latest book, which is called Your First Job, 